I've shown you my home, not to show off. Hmm. I've shown you my home so that people know that it is possible to achieve it as a woman. Wow. It is possible to achieve it as a woman. If you work very hard, you know what you want in life. This is Bentley. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is a Bentley. My late husband loved cars. Oh. He was my inspiration. He loved cars. Yeah, I he had can a Lamborghini, see that. He had a Ferrari, a Royce. He just loved cars. So because of that, I also took that from him. I also love cars. Hmm. I love cars. This is the only car you have? I've got a G-Wagon, but it's, uh, it's not here at the moment. It's in South Africa. It's gone for service. So These are material things, like the Bible says. We are going to leave all this behind when we go. But whilst we are on earth, and God allows it to something. If you are given something, you can't look after it because you have been given. You don't know how to look after it. You don't know how difficult it was for the person that gave you to get the money to buy what they will have given you. That's why you find if, if I give you 10,000 today because you didn't work for it, chances you won't do much with it. Thank you. But if you give 10,000 to someone who is an entrepreneur, if you come back after two months, that 10,000 could be 15,000 or 20,000. But other people, you give them 10,000, especially girls. I always say girls of today. You give her 10,000, the first thing she thinks of, she's going to Louis Vuitton, she's going to Gucci. She's, that's, what, that's all they think of, um, to buy the, the latest hair. That's what all they think of. They will never say, okay, I've been given 10,000. Let me think, what can I invest in to make sure this 10,000 remains there? Others will go to China, buy clothes, resell, make that money multiply. My name is Odom Gandla, CEO of Travesh Travel in Arare, born and bred in Blawayo. Zimbabwe has got beautiful women, but the most beautiful come from Blawayo. That is a fact. I'm a mother of two girls, Precious and Melissa Mtunzi, 27 and 21 year old. I'm 50 years of age. Many of you might not believe, but I am 50 years of age. No, you're what? I love my country. I love Zimbabwe. I'm proudly Zimbabwean. There's nothing I wouldn't do for my country. It is my name. That's all I have. That's all you I have. have? Nothing. Nothing. Riches, everything is nothing. What I have is my name. My name is more important to me. There's no price anyone can pay for my name. So when I go out there, when people talk about Zodwa or when they associate themselves with me, they have to identify with the name with the brand. Because, I will forever yeah. associate myself with you since I'm in Zimbabwe. <laughs> <laughs> I hope when I mention when I your name, to you. people will give me money. Listen, I, I, I want to... You said you were born in Bulawayo. Yes. Grew up in Bulawayo. Yes. You, you schooled in Bulawayo. I went to school in Bulawayo, yes. Did a few years in Harare, but most of my education was in Bulawayo. And what brought you to Harare? My father used to work for Foreign Affairs in Harare, so... That's why we lived here. But when he then was sent on a diplomatic mission outside Zimbabwe, then that's why I then moved back to Blawai. Oh, okay. Because we were originally from there, so it made sense for the children to remain home than to remain in Harare. You didn't but, go? Um, no, I didn't, I didn't travel with him. I would only go to visit on during school holidays and then uh, come back for when schools open. How was life in Zimbabwe growing up? I want to know how it all started. Okay. Give me a brief of how you became the Zodua that saved me from so many things. I used to go to, to school. I would walk 10 to 15 kilometers to school uh, from my f first year of school up to grade seven in the village. That's where my father came from. So I stayed with his mom. That's why I was staying in the. That's why I stayed in the village. So when my the grandmother passed away, then I moved to Harare to come and join the parents. Okay. And then um, education year up to form three. Then moved back to Blawayo, did my education, finished. Then came back to Harare, <laughs> did my diplomas, travel and tourism. Then got my first job at a company called Express Motors as a bus conductor. So I was selling bus tickets mm. at that company. Um, I think for two years. Then I left. And then I got a job at a travel agent as a receptionist. That was 1995. I worked at that travel agency as a receptionist and then started doing ticketing consultants, I think for three years, then I moved. I didn't look, I think I have always been wanting or looking for something better to do because I never was happy staying in one place. Because I always thought that, you know what, I think if I move to this company, I'll be better. That's what I did until I said, no, wait a minute. 
I keep moving from one job to the other. Mm. I end up in a I, I ended up in a, a job trotter. One I'm here one year, I move, I'm here. What are you looking for? Then I said to myself, you know what, I think let me start my own business. Prior to that, I was teaching after work. I've always been an entrepreneur all my life. Wow. I would go after work, I would go to college to learn how to make cakes, to learn how to cook, to learn how to cut clothes and all that. Mm. And then during weekends, I'll be doing wedding cakes, I'll be doing events, whatever, and I'll be teaching. I ended up wow. having my own classroom at home where I was teaching at home uh, the travel and tourism from the house. So I've always wanted to make my own money without working for somebody. So that's the journey. 1999, we decided to start a company called Rural Travel and Tours with my four partners. One of which I'd met as my student at uh, where I was teaching. Then he says, no, you can't be a teacher and then working for somebody. Can we start our own travel agency? We started our own travel agency in 1999 with this gentleman that I, who was my student. He had money. He had his own businesses. He had started way before me. We started the company in 1999. 2000, I was the marketing director, there was a CEO and other people. Still, I wasn't satisfied. Because I felt that I was doing all the marketing for the business, so I was bringing all the clients. I felt that all the money belonged to me. I didn't mm. want to share with the other three directors. <laughs> so I moved again. Yes, I moved 2003. I started my own entity, which is Travis Travel. That is where I am now. So. Wow. Since 2003, I've been running my own business. It's never, it hasn't been easy. Just like anything, it's never easy. It's like a baby is born. It's not easy there for the child to grow up. They, they are born, they start crawling, they start to walk, they start talking. So many things happen. Same applies with a business. Mm. When, you, a business is, when you open a business, it's like a baby being born. Yeah. You have to look after it like an egg so that it doesn't break. Mm. Though sometimes it can fall, break, what is important is when you fall in, what do you do? Do I fall and remain sleeping forever? Or I fall, I pick myself up, I start afresh, I find out what is it that I did wrong so that you correct yourself. So I started my business 2003. It wasn't easy, like I thought it was going to be, but because I'm not a quitter, I don't give up. I always, nothing, with me, something that cannot talk back to me can never be difficult. Fifty-five percent of the persons in Congo are women. Oh wow! So imagine we say to women to not make a change. It's more than half of the like of the people. We have to be part of the of the change. We the, we we want to see. We have to be. We have a um, a role to play. Mm. And actually, I'm not the kind of person that will say to you that man and woman are the same thing. We are different, but it's not we. Like a gender is better and the other one is less. We are different, but equal. And so we have to also make a change, play a part, and uh, we have to, to have the freedom that we want. It's not because you are free, independent, but you're not a good wife. It's not because you are free, independent, but you're not like a good mom. You can so, be all of that. So you are, you are talking about a financial freedom for young females. Is that what you're trying to say? Yes. Financial freedom, but also a freedom of the mind. Why not we cannot think and um, act and create things? Why we just have to cook? Why we just have to ask for money? And as I said, um, we have a culture where we always ask, ask, ask. Why women also have to ask, ask like, 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 like a kid? You heard that. <laughs> Enough of asking for the wigs and the nails and the... Uh-huh, continue. I'm very excited today, you know why? Because a young female African is making my dream come true. A young female African is helping change the narrative in Kinshasa. And that is why I'm smiling a lot today. Here in Kinshasa, they said coffee does not grow. And she left all the way from Paris came to Kinshasa and said, you know what? I will do what you people think is impossible. And that is why I found myself in here to come share her story so that you and I can help 
take her to the ward. You know what you need to do to help me? Like the video. Please, it's very important. Do you know that you are an inspiration? <laughs> no, I, I, don't, I don't know, but sometimes I feel it. And do you know that everyone is telling me that I cannot leave Kinshasa without meeting you? Yeah, really? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, are you a celebrity in Kinshasa? The first day that I told people that I'm going to Congo, they asked me, are you going to Kinshasa? Because we want you to meet one of the people that is actually making a change in Kinshasa. Wow. It's a pleasure meeting you. It's a pleasure meeting you too. My name is Watermaya, the one and only annoying village boy from Ghana. And since you are the one and only person who is growing coffee in Kinshasa, I would love to know you more. Tell me something about yourself. Uh, well, my name is Tisha Mukuna. Mm -hmm. I born in Kinshasa. Okay. But I grew up in Paris. You grew up in Paris? Yes. Wow. For my study. How long did you stay in Paris? Uh, well, for all my study, till my master. And uh, my MBA, I did it in China, in oh, Shanghai. Okay. And then from there, what happened? You decided to come back to Kinshasa? Yes, from there, I decided to come back to Kinshasa. For me, it was normal to come back to my own country. I want to ask you a question. Yeah. See, were you normal? Do people thought you're normal living in Europe <laughs> and coming back to Africa? Well, uh, I think that if we want to change Africa, we need all Africans. That is deep. Wow. So you growing coffee in here. What is the inspiration behind it? You know, first of all, they said they don't grow coffee in Kinshasa, but you're the first person to do it. What really inspired you to do that? Si, uh, si, si je dois être honnête, je dirais mon père. Uh, mon père a toujours une passion pour l'agriculture. Hmm. Donc on a commencé à, à planter des choses, des oranges, des citrons, des mangoustaniers. Et, uh, et jusqu'au jour, je me suis dit, tiens, j'aimerais faire pousser aussi du café. Alors tout le monde me disait, non, non, le café, ça pousse pas à Kinshasa. Mais comme je suis têtu, uh, j'ai décidé de le faire. I wanted to try with coffee too. Okay. But everyone was telling me, okay, coffee doesn't grow in Kinshasa. You cannot do coffee in Kinshasa. Hmm. And you cannot do Arabica in Kinshasa. But uh, I try because I, I like to see by myself. And it's grown. And as you can see, we have Arabica. And how do you feel knowing that you've done something impossible in Kinshasa? Actually, at first, it was just like, ta-da, I have coffee, and that's it. And then people were telling me, okay, I know someone mm -hmm. in Turkey, I know someone in Lebanon, you can buy your coffee, you can do that, you can do this. I was like, but why I will just sell it? Why I cannot just transform it, build my own brand? Bonne nouvelle, nous sommes enfin à Kin Marché où vous pouvez trouver la quinoise. Nous proposons quatre gammes de café pour satisfaire tous nos clients. Le café Arabica, très doux, faible teneur en caféine pour une journée aromatisée. Le café Mocaccino, le meilleur café chocolaté. Il est recommandé contre la fatigue et le stress. Le café Arabusta, idéal pour renforcer votre énergie au quotidien. Robusta, pour plus de robustesse, avec ce nouveau format et une valve 250 grammes. La quinoise, le plaisir du vrai café 100% naturel, 100% congolais. Wow. And this is how I was like, okay, no, I have to do it. I have to, to build my own brand. I have to, to, to do something with all of that. And uh, this is how... Uh, the old thing started and, I, and I'm not walking by myself. Okay. I see he's here. <laughs> it's the chief of the village. Okay. Chief Cobra. It helps me a lot. And uh, yeah. So let me understand you have your own brand. So which means that after you harvest the coffee, you just add value to the coffee. Yes. So from the fresh to what? To the final product. To the final product. Yes. Let me understand this. How many hectares do you have right now? Uh, the old plantation is 20 hectares. Okay. But we do coffee on eight. And year by year, we had more hectares, uh, like eight, nine. And more uh, year by year, we, we had more surface. And I will show you how we do it and how we plant it. Wow. Now, before you show me that, see, you said you, you, you started growing coffee. You, you don't work alone. So which means you work with the people from this community? Yes, obviously. Um, all the people that work in the plantation mm -hmm. are living just nearby. And um, it's also an open plantation. That means that all the people from the village mm -hmm. 
can grow everything they want in the plantation for wow. free. So there is like some spaces just for them. They can put their own uh, vegetables, fruits, and it's for them. So far, how many people are working for you now? Uh, wow. Uh, in the plantation, six to eight, six. Um, Permanent workers? Yes. Okay. And two more for, like, depends on, on the work. So which means you, you soon need to open a coffee shop. I Are you thinking so. about that? Yes, I hope so. I want to have the um, Starbucks made in Kinshasa. Oh. Like kind of, like a coffee shop like that. Oh, okay. That makes you proud and that makes you, um, yeah, proud. W what is the brand name of your coffee now? La Quinoas. La Quinoas. Yes, Quinoas means a girl from Kinshasa, a woman from Kinshasa. And the name La Quinoas is because the plantation is in Kinshasa. It seems you love Kinshasa with all your heart. Uh, exactly. I love Congo. You love Congo, <laughs> yeah. not just Kinshasa. Yes. 